Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Crescent City Council meeting for Monday, April 1st. Uh, we were just in uh, closed session. And um, I'll call the meeting to order. And would you please take roll? Yes, sir. Council Member Gastineau? Here. Council Member Shalong? Here. Council Member Murray? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Holly? Here. And Mayor Enya? Here. Thank you. And um, Council Mayor Pro Tem Holly, would you lead us in the yeah. pledge, please? Okay, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we've just come out of closed session. Mr. Black, did you have anything to report out of closed session? Mayor, no final actions were taken in closed session. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we'll move to acknowledgments, and we have three acknowledgments this evening. Acknowledgement number one is proclaiming April 13th, 2013 has Distinguished, distinguished Women's, Day, Women's Day. And this is a certified a certificate of recognition of the City of Council of the City of Crescent City recognizing April 13th, 2013 has Distinguished Women. Distu Day. Distinguished Young Women. Oh, Young Women. I left the young out. Oh, okay. Women Day. And is there <coughs> someone to receive that? Yes. Are you Barbara? Yes. Barbara Lopez. Yes. Let me. So, Distinguished Young Women uh, Scholarship Program is pre was previously the Junior Miss Scholarship Pageant. Would you like to say something? If I may, that's, that's okay. So, yes, we're the Distinguished Young Women of Del Mar County. Um, it used to be formally known as America's Junior Miss, but they thought it was a little bit too pageanty of a name, so they changed it to a difficult name called Distinguished Young Women. But um, it's a program that's been around since the 1950s. It started in Mobile, Alabama, and we've had the program since the 1960s. Um, our local program is sponsored by the uh, Del Norte County, or excuse me, the Crescent City JCs. Um, the girls must be juniors in high school with at least a 3.0 GPA. Um, they're all competing for scholarship college money. And this year we have 13 girls competing. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a great group of girls. So they compete in six different categories. Um, the first one's Scholastic, and that's a $300 scholarship. We have a judge's interview, which is $300. We have fitness, which is $200. They do a talent, which is worth $300, self-expression, which is worth $300, and they're asked questions on stage randomly out of a hat, so it's a good experience for them. Um, and then spirit, which is like a Miss Congeniality, where the girls vote on each other. Um, and that's $200. Um, they have third runner-up, which is $300, second runner-up is $400, first runner-up is $600, and Distinguished Young Women of Del Norte County is $1,000, and that's sponsored by Smith River Rancheria this year. Um, all these scholarships are donated by local businesses and local um, people within the county, and without them and their support, we wouldn't be able to fund the program. Um, this year's program Saturday the 13th. It's at 6 o'clock at Crescent Oak. So it's a great program. The girls are wonderful. This is my first year directing. I've been a part of the program for about 13 years, but it's it's been a great transition to direct, directing, so it's fun. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you very much. We'll get you a <clears throat> corrected copy. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. I just wanted to say congratulations on becoming the director. Um, <clears throat> Barbara was a mother hen, which was uh, uh, a woman, a volunteer, that would spend time mentoring the girls during the, the program. And so she was a mother hen when I directed the pageant, and. Um, and then Deborah Wright took it over, and now 10 years after she did it, Barbara has taken it over. So it's a tremendous honor and, it, it, you know, just a humbling experience. And so I just, I wish you the best of luck. It's great to hear there's 13 girls. Thank you. Yeah, and I, thank you. I just want to say that my daughter participated when she was, she was in high school, and it was a great experience. Mine so did, too. You. My, yeah, my girls. Thank you. Miss Abby. Miss Abby, yes. 
Acknowledgement number two is a presentation of an acknowledgement of April, the month of April being, being Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And is Liz Page here? She is. Come on up. This is the certificate of recognition of the City Council of the City of Crescent City, recognizing the month of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We want to start by thanking you for your ongoing support of the North Coast Rape Crisis Team and for pro pro proclaiming April as both Sexual Assault and Child Abuse Awareness Month. It takes an entire community, an entire community's commitment to end violence, and as leaders, you set the tone for others. My name is Liz Page, and I am an advocate and prevention educator with the North Coast Rape Crisis Team. NCRCT has been in existence for 39 years with an office here in Crescent City since 1988. We serve people of all ages and genders who have been directly or indirectly affected by any <coughs> form of sexualized violence, regardless of when the trauma occurred. We may hear from someone who was raped today, or we may hear from someone who was harmed decades ago and is now reaching out for support. Because sexual abuse often happens in the context of child abuse, we provide services to children and their families and work towards the prevention of all forms of child maltreatment. Because it often happens in the context of domestic violence, we work with local allies towards ending all forms of intimate partner abuse and provide services to those who have experienced the violence. In addition to a wide range of free and confidential intervention services, we provide primary prevention programs to children as young as preschool through elementary, junior and senior high, as well as college and other adult programs, including trainings for professionals and um, professionals who serve families. Proclaiming April a Sexual Assault Awareness Month is important because one in three women, one in 11 men, one in four girls, and one in six boys will, ex will experience some, some form of sexual abuse because it takes an entire community to address and end violence. Raise, raising awareness about the issue is essential. During April, as you will see on the poster in front of you, um, there's a number of events we, will, um, we would like to highlight one, and that is International Jeans for Justice Day on April 24th. It is a day to wear jeans to show your support of all survivors and break, and break the myths which continue to blame and re-victimize those who have been harmed. You have in your packet a sticker and information, and we hope you join us on that day. Thank you again for your commitment to the work of the North Coast Rape Crisis Team and to our vision, A World Without Violence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Thanks for all that you do for, for Del Mar County. Thank you. <laughs> our third uh, acknowledgement is a proclamation of the City Council of Crescent City proclaiming Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service. And I don't think Patty Bernelson is here, but I'll read the proclamation. It's a proclamation for the, of the City Council of City of Crescent City proclaiming the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service. Whereas service to others is a hallmark of American character and central to how we meet our challenges. And whereas the nation's mayors are increasingly turning to the national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet city needs, and as where has AmeriCorps, VISTA, and Senior Corps address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and nation, from educating students for the jobs of the 21st century and supporting veterans and their military families to preserving the environment and helping communities recover from natural disasters. And where has the national service expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And where has the National Service participate, serve, participants serve in more than 70,000 locations across this country, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. And where has the National Service participate, participants increase the impact of organizations they serve with both both through their direct service and by recruiting and managing millions of additional volunteers. And whereas the National Service represents a unique public-private partnership 
that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community input and increase the return on the taxpayer dollars. And whereas AmeriCorps, Vista, and Senior Corps volunteers demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to serve, a commitment that remains with them in the future endeavors. And whereas the city, whereas Crescent City and the County of Del Norte recognize and honor the contributions made by our local building healthy communities and building healthy youth AmeriCorps members who are monitor, mentoring in the schools and the first five service corps, VISTA members, who are serving in five local organizations to build capacity, and whereas the Corporation of, for National and Community Service shares our priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the mayors across the country to support the Mayor's Day of Recognition for, our nat for national service on April 9, 2013. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Richard Ania, Mayor of Christen City, do hereby proclaim April 9, 2013 as National Service Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city and to thank those who serve and to find ways to give back to their communities. And we'll present this to, would you like, well, we'll present this to Patty Burnelson. Thank you. And we do have several volunteers in our community that uh, do this all the time, the RSVPs. And yeah, it's too bad we didn't have Someone them here. here. Yeah, we didn't come tonight. So that's our proclamations. We're going to move on to the consent calendar. Items 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, approval of warrant claims, regular meeting minutes, payroll report, and adopting the uh, memorandum of understanding between one of the employee groups. And is there a motion for approval? Move to approve. I'll second that. And I just wanted to thank the CCEA Employees Association for um, their work with our city manager um, and coming to the table for their agreement. Thank you. And, um, and, Mr. Mayor, yes. you indicated that it was items through eight. It's actually seven. items I meant four seven. through seven. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So it's items four through seven. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I just have one very minor change on sure. the minutes. Um, on page five of the minutes, it talks about Willie Lucero spoke in opposition to the increases. There are many people in the community that cannot, I'm sure it meant to be said, pay the increase. Oh, pay. You know, it just says cannot the increase. And so oh. I just wanted to make sure that that was there. Okay, thank you. Any other corrections or comments? Any public comment on our, on our consent agenda? Yes. Donna Westfall, I live in the city, and I'm sorry I didn't read that. Um, I was wondering, did they get any COLAs or salary increases? Yes. Okay, the county took a 13% across the board cut. I'm wondering why the city didn't. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there a, um, there's been a motion and a second. Would you please take the roll? Oh, do you have a public comment? Come on, I have consent on the consent calendar. Thanks. I believe that all our city staff, especially our parks and parks to people, our street to people, I saw them working today, that any cost of living raise or any COLA raise that were, were given to them is deserved and and they should be rewarded for the work they do for the city. So I disagree with Ms. Westfall. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. And would you call the roll on, that, on the consent? Yes, sir. Council Member Shalong? Yes. Council Member Gastineau? Yes. Council Member Murray? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Holly? Yes. And Mayor Enya? Yes. And I'll note on this memorandum of understanding between the city and the Crescent City Employees Association, they are immediately paying eight, all 8% 8 of their retirement, and they're taking a five, we're giving them a 5% COLA, so they're taking a 3% pay cut. So this is not a pay raise, this is a pay cut. Just like the uh, memorandum we had a couple of weeks ago with another employees association. So no one's getting a pay raise. They took a 3% pay cut. It's, that's worth noting. 
Okay, reports and presentations, we have none. Now we'll go to communications. This is the public comment period where any member of the audience is invited to address the City Council on any matter that's within the jurisdiction of the City. Comments of public interest or on matters appearing on the agenda are accepted. Note, however, that the Council is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on non-agendized items. Such items can be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on a future agenda. Any comments that are not at the microphone are out of order and will not be part of the public record. After receiving recognition from the mayor, please state your name and whether you're a city or county resident and public comment is listed is limited to three minutes. Any public comment this evening, Mr. Miles? A number of years ago, my city gave the county a piece of property in Peterson Park. The purpose of that gift was for a group of young people to have a place to skateboard. A number of us served on the skateboard committee and we came up with the concept of the above ground features in Peterson Park. I'm asking this council tonight to write a letter to the Board of Supervisors and my reasoning is this. The county is not doing due vigilant maintenance of that park. You can drive by there, see graffiti, some of the language in that graffiti is what little kids use spray cans to create. Also, there's a number of safety features that have been taken off and they are currently being stored at the county and they need to be put up before school gets out because that park is heavily used. Also, the county during the summertime is not doing the mowing inside the skateboard park, and they should, because there was a signed agreement at that time that piece of property was given to the county for the skateboard park and I believe the county should uh, upheld their end of the bargain. So I would hope that, a, that this city council would send a letter to the county. Also, in Saturday's paper, there was a letter from Jim Snow. In my view, there is no retaliation on the city's part. And at the end of my street, there's a piece of blighted property. And it's time my city makes Jim Snow clean up that property. And he should be hauled into court. He's no better than Mr. Deal. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Donna Westfall, I live in the city. In follow-up to the grand jury report of 2009, the Prop 218 procedure was fraught with problems. In order to eliminate any problems in the future, it's essential that we all know an accurate count on the number of sewer connections. I put in my public records request around March 15th, and it, I asked for an accurate number of toll sewer users located in the city and the county, whether or not they are currently a customer. Today I received a response from Bob Black that the city has not been able to locate any document that contains the information I'm requesting other than a website screenshot listing 3850 sewer connections. However, in 2007, David Okowski requested this information by asking how many sewer connect connections are there currently, including temporarily vacant buildings, 
You received an answer from Ward Stover to Jim Barnes. I'm handing you all a copy and request that this be made a part of the record. There are listed a total of 3744 broken down by 3264 single family residential, 330 light commercial, 50 heavy commercial, 99 multifamily, which includes apartments, trailer parks, etc., and one industrial. Connection breakdown, city 1417, CSA 2304, Harbor 23. The city does not track vacant buildings. When the Prop 218 process took place in 07, the city said there were 3421 sewer connections and that for the protest vote to win 1711, no votes had to be received by the city. We counted 1765, Diane Nickerson counted 1310. I'm wondering why the difference between 3421 and 3744, maybe someone told me, but I forgot. Anyways, I'm handing in a new records request and would like the same information again. And also I'm wondering why the city was responsive to David Okalski back in 2007 and not to me in 2013. Secondly, I'm handing in another records request at a 2008 audit committee meeting, the question came up about R.J. Ricciardi billing almost $84,000 extra over the contract amount. Chair Kelly Shalong was going to sign a letter to Ricciardi as an investigation into seemingly unapproved expenses. I'd like a copy of the letter along with any response. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Public comment, come on up. Please state your name and if you're a city or county resident. I'm Michael Haver. I'm a city resident. Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank Public Works or Parks, whoever it takes, to, uh, ad for addressing the homeless camp at the point of honor. It's clean, finally, and they're gone. Good. I'd like to thank Chief Plack for the increased patrols at Beachfront. It kept it quiet all through the holidays. Did a good job. And a suggestion for parks with the new trash cans. They're full in 24 hours to the point where the birds are hauling garbage everywhere. And there are cans spread around town that are not used. Those cans are small and portable. Is there any way we could set it up to reset the cans so we can double up what's there in the heavy use areas along Beachfront Park? And then if necessary, they, they're, like I said, they're small and portable and they can be moved in uh, event periods, but it should keep the place cleaner because uh, the, the cycle of uh, the dumping of them is spread so far out that all it takes is one sunny lunch period and those cans are full. Thank you. So it might be a simple solution. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I'll close uh, public Mayor, comment. Mr. Mayor, um, yes. I walk along that area quite frequently and um, I have reported when the cans are full to our city manager yeah. and uh, that, but maybe having doubling up That's on the thought. garbage is a good I garbage cans is a good idea because yeah. they do get full. Refresh my memory Ms. Plotso, does Recology empty those or only certain ones? Like at 9th Street at the... No, Recology empties all, all of the public cans. They empty them all. Okay. Correct and I will speak with Recology on that. We spoke with them before and see if they can you know, maybe address those on a daily basis or every other day. Okay. You know, some of the uh, problems that we are having is people dumping household garbage right. into those cans that are within in the park right. and that just seems to be... Um, it's not happening in just the park. <laughs> I, I walk Pebble Beach all the time and I yeah, have actually explained to people that are bringing their household garbage mm -hmm. out of their home on Pebble Beach Drive <laughs> and putting it into the public trash can that it's not mm -hmm. legal to you do know, so. We made those openings even smaller so that wouldn't happen, but apparently mm -hmm. it's still doing it. We can address okay. that. And Thank I've you. seen people, you know, you, know, you know, garbage out, it's in the vehicle, goes into the cans and just, you know, big amounts of it, so. Okay. Thank you. We'll see what we can do. Comments? All right, if not, we'll move on. A public hearings we don't have any tonight. Continuing business, item number eight. Consider and weigh full reading, read by title only and adopt it, second reading, ordinance 773, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Crescent City amending the city of Crescent City zoning map for APN number 118-260-12. Plata, did you? 
Have anything to say about this? Making a note on garbage cans. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'd like to uh, have uh, Mr. Taylor uh, introduce and discuss this item. Sure. Okay, Mr. Taylor, I'm sorry. That's okay. You're so quiet. I didn't see you there. Uh, as you know, this is a request for the zoning change from residential professional to C1 Downtown Business District. Uh, the physical address is 988 uh, 9th Street. Uh, it was the location of the former Camelot Inn. Okay. Um, this first be came before the Planning Commission at the March 14th, uh, 2013 meeting. We held a, a do we know to public uh, meeting. Uh, then came before the City Council March 18th, 2013 for a public meeting. And so we're back tonight for the second reading, basically, way the second reading and for the adoption. Um, I gave the full presentation at the March 18, 2013 meeting, but I'll answer any questions or I can go over it again if you like. Does the council have any questions? We presented this last two weeks ago. Seeing none, I'll open this for any public. Is there any public comment on this zoning change at 9th and J Street? Yes. I have a concern about this proposed parking lot at that location. I didn't understand at the initial reading how many parking spots would be created at this location for the ambulance company. And my concern is we have an ordinance that says if you have X amount of parking spaces, you have to plant trees in that location. Well, 9th Street is one of our more visible streets. If you have eight, I'm not, I'm not sure about this, if you have more than five or eight spaces, will the ambulance company be required? I know they have to do some sc screening with their fans because mm, somebody mentioned that at a ribbon cutting ceremony because he's on, well, it was the owner of the ambulance company to tell you the truth. And if he's gonna have to do some fence screening, will he have to plant trees too? Thank you. Any other public comment on this item? Don, I'll close from a comment and bring it up here. And you acknowledge that at the last meeting. Yeah, I can address that quickly. And it's, just keep in mind, this is just for the zoning change. Mm -hmm. So what we're asking for is to change the zoning to a more compatible zoning that'll allow them to, it's more compatible for the commercial use. Right. Instead of the, the old motel or the semi you know, residential use that was And there. then they'll go back to the planning commission. Uh, uh, won't go back, but so we don't, uh, the, the short answer is when they, if they want to put the parking there, if that's what they so choose to do, they'll have to come bring a parking plan to us. So I can't answer how many parking spaces oh, are anything at this time. Okay. That's a totally separate issue. So once the zoning change is done, then we'll address the issue of development. The vegetation. Okay, thank it, you. It, yeah. Mr. Mahoney. Is it at that time that you also address whether or not, I mean, if, if they choose to make a different structure or a, a new office building or something, that's when Correct. it comes Correct. So now out. parking's different. Now parking's a principally permitted use in the C1, so that means it doesn't have to come up for architectural review or anything. It's not a structure. But they do have to submit a parking plan for our approval. Uh, but if it is a structure, then yes, then it would come back to the Planning Commission for an architectural review. Okay. But the zoning would allow for that to happen? Correct. Subject depending to that depending on the type of development that they propose, but yes. It, it, it allows for, for commercial uses, the, the setbacks aren't astringent, so it allows for a little bit better for commercial development. And it makes sense, if I, I, I have a copy here, if you recall the zoning map that I submitted last time, I, I mean, all the surrounding uses are C1. I firmly believe that the reason why they kept it as RP is because of the motel that used to be there. It's no longer there. Thank you. Is there any other council comment on this item? If not, I'd entertain a motion for approval. I'll move to adopt Ordinance 773, an ordinance of the City Council of the, Crescent, of the City of Crescent City, amending the City of Crescent City zoning map for APN 1182612. Second. Moved and seconded. Would you please pull the vote? Yes, sir. 
Council Member Murray? Yes. Council Member Shalong? Yes. Council Member Gastineau? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Holly? Yes. And Mayor Enia? Yes, thank you. Under new business, we have none. We're under uh, City Council items now, legislative matters. Um, are there any legislative matters to come before us? I can add a few things, Mayor. Uh, I sent the council an email that I received from Ms. Rounds, uh, who's our representative at the League of California Cities. And at the last uh, Redwood Empire meeting, the uh, um, group, uh, the legislative group, uh, recommended three uh, letters to be sent um, on behalf of the Redwood Empire addressing opposition of SB 7, um, looks like a uh, notice of support for SB 33, and no support for our AB 305, and, and Council Member Murray was there, and maybe can you know, address a little bit more if, if there was discussion on that. Uh, also, today I received an, another uh, email from Ms. Rounds on uh, other uh, letters that they're, the league is looking at, wanting to either in opposition or support, and I'll review those and go over that with the mayor uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you. I um, forwarded those emails from uh, Sarah and. Uh, to um, our city manager with um, an idea that um, if there's some legislation that's coming up before our next council meeting that there's a sample of oh, if we approve this I think it's was it Cloverdale um, I can't remember which city is doing it already but they'll authorize the mayor to send a letter either supporting or opposing and their sample um, both supporting and opposing uh, letters for us to use and we don't have to reinvent the wheel so okay. that we could approve um, Sending okay. it without having to ha wait till our next meeting because time sometimes is of, of the essence. Okay. There's a number of bills that are coming up uh, this month, and I have um, I have copy of everything that Sarah gave us at the legislative meeting. If anybody wants those to see a, uh, a quick and dirty summary of all of them, so only on hard copy though. I don't have a. Okay. Sarah might have. Uh, I, I believe I may have emailed that to the entire council. Yeah, that's on the, yeah. That's on um, the computer. So. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any comments on that? Okay, let's go to city manager report and city council directives. Mr. Palazzo, did you have anything to report? You know, not at this time. Just okay. more staff is very busy, you know, trying to get projects, um, you know, put together and, and, you know, big push right now for our second street sewer uh, project and that should be coming before the council uh, in two weeks. Okay. Um, so we're just very busy. Good. Okay. Any city council directives? Okay. Now let's go to reports, concerns, referrals. So council member Murray. Council travel. Um, congratulations on running the quickest meeting we've ever had. It's not, <laughs> not over, over yet. yet. That's right. <laughs> um, yes, I I think all of us attended. All of the council members um, attended the leading boards on the 19th and. Uh, I, I did not attend. Oh, I missed you. I was pointed out in the newspaper that I was missed, which made me feel happy <laughs> instead of sad. Oh, okay. I was still recuperating from being so sick. Oh, yeah, but you've, yeah. been, you've sick. been there the last I've, several years. I think it's the first one I've ever missed. Yeah, so. you were, and you were sick. <laughs> uh, I, we had the uh, local transportation commission meeting where we um, amended our overall work plan to include a um, traffic study at the schools which I'm really thrilled about, and um, a roads and sidewalks um, study. Is that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is part of the HEAL campaign, so I'm excited about that. And then I did attend the Redwood Empire Division of the California League of Cities Legislative Meeting and Business Meeting in Willits. We um, adopted revised bylaws, and you were all sent those if you had wanted to make any comments, and then, um, we, uh, Jared Huffman, Congressman Jared Huffman, um, showed up and, and said hi, and we had a really nice um, opportunity to network with the other cities, and I talked to a couple of cities in Lake County about Sutter, so that was interesting. And then um, on the 25th, um, Congressman Huffman came up with um, his area representative, um, John Driscoll, um, and we met with him at the airport and then later that day we had the LAFCO meeting, Local a Agency Formation Commission. And then um, just to keep on your radar, uh, we, I participated in the California Coastal Com 
cities meeting with the California Coastal Counties with the Coastal Commission in December, and they're going to have um, a summary of that meeting at their, the Coastal Commission's next meeting on April 12th in Santa Barbara. So um, you could find that online. So I don't think any of us are going to go to it. It's too far away. And that's, uh, that's it. Mayor Pro Tem Hall. Thank you. Actually, it was a busy couple of weeks, but I'll try and be uh, quick about this. Uh, the first uh, meeting that I, attend I attended was the Senior Center annual uh, meeting. They have a meeting annually that's required of a lot of nonprofits. So that was an interesting meeting, and that was followed up by the Board of Directors meeting. Uh, I am proud to say I'm the chairperson of their personnel committee, so I'll be doing some personnel work again. Um, and uh, we also talked about some budget issues. So you are old enough to be a senior. And do you I, meet at the apple peddler? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. That's coming. Also attended the lead-in awards. Um, and uh, I was, I'm always very impressed by law enforcement in this community. I've had the honor of working with law enforcement in a number of capacities. And uh, not only are they good individually, but I know how much coordination goes on. And I want to acknowledge that. Uh, on into the uh, local transportation uh, commission. Uh, in addition to, to looking at the, at the, at the work plan, uh, we did hire a, a local accountant to help with some of the accounting needs that, that, that El Tico has. And, and there's a lot of complex accounting that has to go on in that organization. Pardon? New requirements. New requirements. That's correct. LAFCO, uh, we uh, talked about the Smith River Cemetery District in LAFCO, and we, we did some other work there. Uh, Solid Waste Management Authority, MET. And uh, among the things that we talked about, we are looking for a public member for that organization. Um, we took some actions that basically uh, valid, not validated, uh, confirmed. confirmed the actions that were taken the prior month. And so that was good to, to uh, get those out of the way. Among those was, was the uh, contract for the abandoned vehicle uh, authority. And, uh, and, uh, Okay, so that, that was solid waste management. Uh, the uh, tri-agency met, uh, it was a very brief meeting. We had some discussions about the future, the way we see the future of, of economic development going, but there's no real consensus. Uh, as we all know, tri-agency is struggling right now and we're just trying to, 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 to decide what direction we're going in. So, so we did meet, however. Uh, had an opportunity to uh, join Mr. Gastineau to an orientation at the city offices with Fritz Litterman, and uh, it was an orientation, uh, an IT orientation, on what we're doing with technology with the city. And uh, I'm real impressed. You know, you think we're a small city, and yet there's a whole lot of technology that, that needs to be coordinated and needs to be monitored, and I think he's pretty much a one-person show. Mm -hmm. So I was real impressed with, with, with his knowledge and his goal setting that he's doing. And it, it, is, it is looking like we'll be We'll be moving toward uh, uh, a paperless process, uh, largely paperless anyway, by summer. But there's some policies that need to be written, and we'll be working on that over the future of Fritzville. Oh, there. Some of us are already there. Um, Experimenting. Uh, finally, I, I, I had an opportunity to join Mr. Palazzo and had dinner with Senator Nielsen, who was, who was visiting. Uh, also present were, were uh, representatives from the harbor, the fair, the county. Uh, the Highway Patrol and uh, Pelican Bay State Prison. So it's, it was an interesting to get all those individuals in, in, in one room uh, expressing their concerns. Yeah. It was very interesting, expressing their concerns about, about what their needs are, and, and uh, we expressed ours as well. We, uh, we brought up that we still have problems with redevelopment, that we absolutely depend on and are encouraging the senator to continue to support community development block grants and we talked about our infrastructure needs. And uh, in the end, we wanted to end with something positive. So we provided everyone that was there with a copy of our, our front street and beachfront plans. And, uh, and they assured us that they would be supporting our grant activities if, uh, if and when those are become available. So that's my report. Thanks, Mr. Holly. Thank Mr. Castano. You guys have been some busy, busy bees. I actually have nothing to report. Oh. Would you like some more committee assignments? <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. I know. I feel lucky. I only have one committee. <laughs> um, I sit on the chamber uh, board, and 
We are planning the economic summit um, and also already working on the 4th of July. And uh, the economic summit will be April 18th at Elk Valley Rancheria's community room. And the city will be partaking as a presenter. So we get to show off all the great work our public works department uh, has been doing and our planning department with the beachfront plan and Front Street. So I'm excited about that. Um, I also attended the Humboldt land uh, title, uh, first anniversary mixer, um, and that's all, that's all, Thank that's you. it. Thank Feeling you. much better and happy Good. to report that. Good. I also attended uh, the El Tico meeting, the solid waste meeting, tri-agency, and also met with Congressman Huffman, in fact, twice last Monday. The first one was at the airport where he was, uh, we caught him up with every, he was caught up by everyone that, uh, there about what the airport project is doing and how, how much it means to our community. And so he has a very good grasp of that. And also later on that day, I was at another meeting with him where the interagency visitor center was discussed and how far along that has come with a grant that's doing half of the design, all of the design work and 30% of the construction design. And so he was very much, uh, in favor of that and having one central location and in both cases he offered any help that he could give us and uh, you may not know congressman huffman sits on the uh, interior department interior resources and so he can be a great help on both of these items so that's what i did for the last uh, couple of weeks mayor um, i also for, uh, forgot to mention um for the second time I'd really like to see us do something at the Economic Summit to celebrate our birthday. And I brought it up at the last meeting. Yes. Um, so it wasn't put on the agenda no, we, uh, for action, but... Um, actually, the city manager and I were discussing I would, that um, a few days ago, and, and I don't know that um, their chairperson that's heading that has gotten back to you yet. With uh, Mrs. Evergreen? Or have you spoken to her? Evermore. Uh, Evermore. I, and I apologize, I was gonna you know, report out on it. Um, I was uh, had a meeting to, with uh, a representative from the mural society, the art, art society, mm -hmm. and you know that meeting you know, was you know canceled. They were going to go talk to the downtown district, I, I believe Wednesday at their Wednesday meeting, to see if there's you know a partnership there on what to do for the city's birthday in the uh, you know in the downtown area. I know they're going to have a. Uh, a presentation with ribbon cutting on, on uh, Mr. Uh, Munger's murals mm -hmm. uh, on Third Street. Uh, beyond that, I'm not quite sure what other events and activities, and, and hopefully I'd have more clarity on that after Wednesday. As for the uh, something at the Economic Summit, I, I'd like to get, just get council direction. I think it's more. Yeah, I just thought, I mean, the simplest thing we could do is to provide a birthday cake as the afternoon dessert. You're talking about at the summit? Mm hmm okay. Yeah, and then the idea that the chamber has is to then invite everybody at the summit, all the business people, to go downtown to whatever is going to be transpiring downtown. There's going to be an art, there's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, they, they canceled the meeting with the city manager, but there's supposed to be an art walk. Um, there's supposed to be a, a celebration of the murals, the completion of the murals on 3rd Street. Um, I know that they were talking about having the downtown stores open and doing some sort of, you know, in-store specials or sidewalk specials. Um, and so I just thought it'd be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Does council think? Or I, I like the idea of a birthday cake at the summit. At I think the, that's a at, really good idea. At the summit. What do you think, Councilman Gessner? You know, maybe, yeah, that would be, if that's what the council wants, maybe we can talk to uh, who's ever catering to make sure that that would be in their plans. You know, I don't know what they have for yeah. those. Yeah, I'm is, actually on the committee, that's so. That's okay to do, yeah. Yeah, it's, it would be. the Elk Valley Rancheria is catering the event. Okay. Um, and so, uh, we, okay. the chamber just needs to know from us if that's the plan. Okay. okay. I, I, I guess I, that's you, a good I'll Speak with you make after Make it so, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make it so. <laughs> would we serve? We probably I think that's a great idea. Great idea. We'll so bring an we, apron. We need city aprons. Yeah, we need city. we need Jeez. aprons. City hard hats. Yeah. Uh, All right. Hard, hard hat, that'd be cute. Well, hard hats I can do. <laughs> along along with this, a, a cake would be a nice simple thing to do. But this is 159. I understand, right? Yes. So 160, sure. we ought to do something bigger. 
I agree. Okay, I agree. so next year we'll do something You're in bigger. charge of the committee. <laughs> we'll just choke down some cake. And be, yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about it. For now. Okay. I just thought because it's the same, our birthday is the same day as the summit, that it would be kind of cool to just, okay. you know, that sounds yep. good. So partner with them. I'll see if I can do a city seal on the cake or something. Yeah, that. that'd be great. I'll give you some, some ideas. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you. Member Sean. Well, if we have no other business, we're going to adjourn, and our next meeting is on tax day, April 15th. <laughs> 2003, uh, 13. So no, no fooling. 6 p. No fooling. It's, I'm telling the truth. Thank you for attending this evening.